You love to perform. You love to be in the main event. We're here to give you people that are watching this right now what you deserve. One person's gonna win, and I think we all know who that is. Now I've beaten Rogan. Now I've beaten Riley. I've beaten Bibiani. I've beaten Oyama. Bateman is going to face Irwin. That is a number one contender match. The winner will face Dan Merle for the Movie Trivia Schmodown Championship. But I've always wanted to play Bateman. I'm hoping this will be the match that kicks us up in the standings. We'll see how I play against Irwin. I have a tremendous amount of respect for him in the world. And in the Schmodown, he's just another building block to my legacy. Greater and greater and greater. And that's how I have to treat him. Welcome back to the movie trivia schmodown. This one is different. <laughs> this is a different episode altogether, and I'm going to explain exactly why. Um, we have an absolutely tremendous, tremendous post production team. I mean, everything that we've been able to do in the digital schmodown era has because is because of the hard work, the blood, the sweat, and the tears that the production team puts into it. Um, we're trying to do some transitions as we move to in studio. We're trying to do transitions as we get to live events, and we're trying to make the show better for you each and every day. Um, for those people who don't know what a TriCaster is, TriCaster is something that we've always used forever, and we're just getting it implemented back into these new shoots. Technical things happen. We had a big shoot one day where we had a whole bunch of matches that were happening, and there was a technical difficulty with one of the matches. Unfortunately, on this particular match that you're about to watch today, the sound was not available. We lost it. We lost the sound, simple as that. And so what we thought that we were going to do this particular moment, because it's such an important match, because the winner of this match between Amaru Moses and um, Moose Haas will go on to play Saul for the number one contender match at Collision. So it was very important for you guys to see it, for stats to be kept up. And Mark Ellis and I decided, hey, dude, we've done this before. Let's just have a, um, a, a conversation you and I, but we'll do it and we'll commentate the match together. So it's kind of a special thing that we're going to be doing today. Mark, anything else to add? Good to see you too, Christian. Uh, yeah, this is going to be episode four of the big thing where Christian and I just talk about whatever, except it's over a match that was, I was there for this match, folks. I announced this match alongside the great Andrew Guy, and it is intense. Hence, it comes down to the wire. It is very well played by both parties. Moose and Amaru really impressed me and both seemed worthy of that number one contender shot. Unfortunately, again, tech glitches happen occasionally and you can't hear my golden voice. And so what we're going to do is run the match. Christian and I are going to talk over it. We'll commentate. We might crack some jokes. We are just going to have as much fun as we can. But we also want you to experience a little bit of that drama that... Certainly, Andrew, myself, and Jen Sturger were feeling that day. And before we get to all that, Christian, the kids like drama, so check this out. I think we at least have sound for the promo. Now you see the celebratory, but not perhaps a wholly unexpected victory for Gucci and his newest experiment, which paid off brilliantly in the form of Moose Haas. Who do you want to take on next, Moose? Amaru, come out to play. We're crushing factions one at a time. People look at me as the boy who cried wolf. That's just stupid. And you know, Sam's got another, uh, you know, IG character in his staple that, uh, you know, we'll see if, uh, how he does against us. Overhyped. Yep, not worth the number two pick. Heard that one. Underperformed. Well, I said that about myself, so. All I got left is knock off Gucci says I'm the worst pick in the draft. He said that already. Bingo. Yeah, buddy. Ready for this one, let's go. What up, family? It's your boy, Amaru, and I am back for my second showdown match. I get to play Woos Hazen. I get to get my revenge. Jacob, I got you, fam. The man went almost 
perfect. So I know we gonna have to come out slugging. We gonna have to come out swinging. It ain't gonna be like my last match. I'm, I'm low-key not happy about my performance, but I don't care because I got the win and I have 19 points in a bad game. Sorry, I figured I'd just wait my turn because I assumed Amaru was still running his mouth. And you saw what I did to your teammate, Jacob Whitmaven, so I earned this one. You stumbled your way through a victory in your first game. I have to assume that you're gonna put up a good fight. I have to assume you know your stuff and you are the number one rookie overall, right? And I called you out so I could test my medal against you, pal. And then you go and get cocky. Amaru, come out to play. Well, be careful what you wish for. Moose has. But I don't think he knows the Warriors very well. The guy who does the clicky thing, he gets stabbed. So. <laughs> it doesn't matter what happened to Jacob. What matters is that you and I are going to be playing each other. Under different circumstances, I feel like we will be friends, right? We obviously have similar tastes in movies. We both have receding hairlines. But unfortunately, you play for the suspects. And I like to thump on suspects. So I'm coming to thump for you on the road. Look, a win is a win, is a win, is a win, is a win. But I ain't got nowhere to go but up. Mark, you gotta do something that not many people have done. Go perfect in two matches in a row. Can you do that, fam? Again, there is a reason, a very good reason. Amaru Moses was the number one pick for the usual suspects. Amaru is gonna eat him up for breakfast, but if that's what he wants, then hey, I don't have to pay for a meal and my guy eats. This is happening. Moose Amaru. Get ready for it. Cause I'm coming. I really ain't got much bad to say about you, but you fake Gucci belt wearing manager though. I heard you, man. You go see what this worst pick is all about. Let's get it. Well, as you see, this is a very big match for both of these factions. Both the Finstock Exchange and the usual suspects have an opportunity to get a number one contender match. You know the usual suspects need it. They would love to try to get an additional four points should they pick up the three points here today. Um, this is big, and it's big for Amir Moses. The kid was the number two draft pick overall. He has um, impressed. He is 1-0 at the moment. His first match, he even says it himself, it wasn't his favorite match. Can he advance and get to 2-0? and And then Moose Haas comes out of nowhere. This was a guy that was drafted by Finstock, and Finstock was drafting all of these rookies, and all of them has delivered, and that certainly was the case with Moose Haas when he just annihilated poor Jacob uh, Whitnaven. It's one of those things where you look at both of these fellas, and I think that after the fans watch the match that's about to play out, they're going to realize that whoever wins this match, Christian, should probably be nicknamed the Silent Assassin for right. multiple reasons. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we, uh, we're going to get this thing underway again. Uh, Christian and I know, as you've probably witnessed in Inner Geekdom matches past, very little about the questions or the answers, but I had them in front of me that day, as did Andrew. And so we're going to play it out. We're going to keep you all company, and we're going to try to get you as invested in possible in a match that both I know Amaru and Moose put their heart, soul into, blood, sweat, and tears were involved, and it was a damn fine match by both parties. You ready to get going, partner? Let's do it. Let's hit the music. Let's get ready to schmodown. I can put that in there. Yeah, How about, about a 60% effort on your part? Oh, I liked it. I'm so curious to see, though, as you say, because you and I are terrible at these inner geekdom matches, if you're going to be able to get any of these questions. All right, here's the first one. What is the first film in the I MCU that. that Jeremy Renner appears in as Hawkeye? Uh, yeah, we just go back and forth like this. Uh, I think the answer is Thor. You think it's Thor? Now, again, I was here for the match, but you know me. It's in one ear, out the other as soon as the match is over. Five, four, three, <laughs> two, one. Let's see what the answer was. Mark. You said Thor. I think you're right. It was Thor. And let's uh, let's spin it. He said Thor. It's, it's it's a that's a good 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 penmanship, I guess. And Thor was what moves. So it's one one mm -hmm. as they start out. And you knew how important it was for both these guys. And this could be the first person that, that Finstock Exchange ever has go for an IG title. 
right, question quick. two, Christian. It's in Middle Earth. Which character in Return of the King says the line, certainty of death, small chance of success, what are we waiting for? That kind of sounds like us right now. That sounds like Gimli. That sounds like Gimli. Yeah. If I was to guess that one, Gimli, what would you say? Oh, here we go. We're going to find out in a second. Let them answer, Mark. Yeah. We're going to find out in a minute. Are you, are you counting down? Why are you counting down so low there? Are you counting uh, down? Hey, I, I like to give them time. You know, I like to milk it. No, they, they got it. And it was Gimli. I'm winning. You don't you don't know that yet. Oh. He seems pretty confident. Yeah. Gimli. Yeah. All right. So it's 2-2. Two, two. It's 2-2 two, two as they as they both are going at it. They're both. You can t- look at the intensity on both their eyes, though, too. You, I, I, I love both these competitors, by the way. Question three. Fantasy sci-fi. How many times did Peter Weller play the role of Robocop? This is a trick question. The answer is two. What? You're supposed to ask me, and I'm supposed to ask you. Oh, sorry. You're already messing up. I already knew that from my research based on the Robocop versus Terminator versus episode on Rotten Tomatoes. Four, three, two, one, zero. Who goes out? Moses goes. So Moses will reveal two. It's a good trick. Because there's three Robocop movies. Yeah, yeah two. Okay, yeah, that's what they're, that's um, what they're gonna try to get you with because there's a third one. He didn't play him. Well, there's four now, but there's three in the four. original trilogy, and oh. then oh, and Peter God. Weller only did the first two. Right, right, right. Go ahead, Can read. you name? Okay, I'll ask you this. In Pirates of the Caribbean: The Curse of the Black Pearl, which character does Norrington refer to when he says, "You're without a doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of"? You just said that along with your voice, by the way. That was really good. Uh, I'm, I'm a pro. You want me to answer this? I'm the one here. Yes, I do. We're, we're competing. Jack Sparrow, right? I don't. It's it, in my mind. It is two to one, Ellis, right now. Four, three, two, one. All right. So now, who reveals this one? Uh, uh, Moose. Moose. Yeah, Jack Sparrow. Please don't, don't, don't mess with me, Mark. I'm, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna challenge for that IG title. Never. Do you know how, bad, how embarrassing that would be if we did that? Well, uh, Amaru is certainly taking the point and getting a leg up on Moose in penmanship terms on that last one. I think so. So right now it is 4-4. They're both tied. They're both uh, hanging in there, and they're both earning it at the moment. It's 10 questions, and obviously in round number one. But 10 questions in inner geekdom. Here we go. Okay, Christian, what's my chance to take the lead? Right. Oh, that's right. I'll, I'll, I'll give this one to you. Even if I know it, I won't answer, okay? But so far, I'm 4-4. I'm, I'm, four four. I'm doing pretty well. You're, hey, it's 2-2 to one. It's two to two now. Okay. Here's the next one. Yeah, but you know the answers. I love how you're just now realizing this. Question five, X-Men. The characters of William Stryker, Victor Creed, Agent Zero, and Gambit appear in what X-Men universe film? Oh, dear God. Well, Gambit is in um, X-Men Origins Wolverine. Uh, the other people confuse me. So I'm going to go X-Men Origins Wolverine. Five, four. With the three, Roger Rabbit claws. One. Pens down. Hands up. And we start this time with Moose. Right? Or do we start Amaro? Who do we start with? Oh, Moose. Ah, yeah, hot. Than it looks. Wrong. You're right. Wolverine. You're right. Origins. And Moose. What you got? Moose. See, got it. They were they were so locked in and focused, but they also were having a little bit of fun with each other and they were enjoying the game, which is what I love, especially with this new rookie crop coming in. Right. They know how to play the game. They love the game. They have fun with the game, but there's no lack of intensity. All right. So right now you're it's you're winning, you're up by one. Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, in which it. film in the Star Wars universe features performances from Jimmy Smits, Genevieve O'Reilly, and Forrest Whitaker? Rogue. Christian, I think we're going to be tied. Rogue One. Yes. All right. That's so incorrect. I don't think either one of them misses this. We are looking for Rogue One, a Star Wars story. That's what do you, you see. You, that's the time of challenges. I'm glad we don't have anymore. And pens down, pens down, hands up. We go this time. Oh, Moose, put your hands down. Uh, here, Moose. You know they can't hear you. I know. Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Would you not accept it, Rogue One? I don't get into hypotheticals. Chris. Okay, exactly. Rogue One. Okay, he said it. You got it. So, like, I wonder. There are some competitors that would have challenged uh, Amaru's uh, answer there. I would have not have ruled in their favor. Uh, I don't do hypotheticals, but as yep. you can see, he got the point. Yeah. All right. Here's the next one. This is Star Trek. Hit me. In, in Star Trek 2009, which character says to Kirk, "Yeah." Well, I got nowhere else to go. The ex-wife took the whole damn planet in the divorce. Uh, that sounds like a uh, Dr. McCoy to me. There's a chance it's Scotty, but I think I'm going Dr. whatever McCoy. If I just wrote Dr. McCoy, I think that's Bones Bones McCoy. Three, two, one. And hands down. Hands down. Pens 
Hands, hands down, hands up. Bones. Yeah, I would. There I you go. Moose, I accept bones and moose. See, he's he's he, dude. That's, you and yeah. I, you and I should should be in this league, in this division. We're doing all right so far. Yeah, wait till round two. It's over. <laughs> and again, the guy who had the answers in front of him, I'm going to get nothing struggling. in round two. He's still struggling. You still have to think about it. Way too hard. Uh, who, all right, right, Christian. All who right. plays? Can I ask you this? I ask you. What are you doing? I ask you this. Okay. Who plays the role of the villainous Orm in Aquaman? Aquaman. That is uh, the villainous Orm. Yeah, come on. Five, four, three, two. Dolph Lundgren. Dolph Lundgren. You, are, you finally get one wrong. All right. Let's go. We're going to start with. It's uh, not Defoe, right? He was a good guy. Patrick. Oh, Will damn it. Dummy. And here's, uh, and here's Moses. Patrick Wilson. So they both got it. Okay. So they go up, and I, I have an opportunity to go up here. Yeah, right? Good luck with that. I think so. Have you seen Patrick Wilson sing uh, Queen? It's unbelievable. You really? Can he belt it out? Dude. Who do you think is a better singer between Amaru Moses and uh, Moose Haas? Say Amaru. Haas has the deep bass yeah. voice. Yeah. All right, Christian. You'll find Pawnee, a tiny alien warrior voiced by Kumail Nanjiani, in which Men in Black film? Shoot. All the pressure. Gotta be the third one. Christian hasn't felt the white hot spotlight third. of the movie trailer All right. The one with the griff. I think you're wrong. I think it's Men in Black International. Is that the second one? It's the fourth one. Damn it. Oh, is there a fourth one? We saw it together, dear. Oh, there is the fourth one, right? Which is the one with with, with uh, Josh Brolin? Is that the third or the fourth one? That's the third one. That's a that's the worst movie, maybe the worst movie I've ever seen in my yeah, life. All right, so we're tied. So yeah, we're, yeah they, they, both these guys are definitely better than I am. I'll pay that much. Yeah, you and I are tied though. So yes, we are. How are you going to go up one? That doesn't make any sense. I only missed. Oh, because I'm, I'm just going to ask you this for fun. Laura yeah. Haddock plays. You see what happens when we don't prep for matches, folks? Plays Vivian Wembley. And this is a match I've already seen. A professor of English literature at Oxford in which Transformers moved. Come on. Uh, you and I can team up for this if you I want. Know. It's the last night because oh. British, you know, oh, I history. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who King cares? Arthur. Last night. All right. So Moose gets it for a potential perfect round. Mm -hmm. And how about Moses? See? These guys are good. All right, so we got both exactly it. what we thought we were going to get here. Perfect round for both these cats. So we got Moses with 10, Haas with 10. It is 10-10, looking for a perfect round for both of them, both vying for that shot to get into the number one contender match at Collision at the end of July. This, and by the way, for those people who didn't know, Collision is going to be a hybrid event. It's going to yep. be digital and in studio all right here's the bonus question who makes a cameo as forensics assistant jack kirby in 2003's daredevil you know okay. this one if you get this i'll give you the lead because we're, we're technically tied i think even though we already messed up the order now richard dreyfus dude cameo daredevil and, you know, and, i i tried oh, to get you to jennifer guess garner? huh jennifer garner no i tried to get you to guess stan lee but the answer is oh. our boy well, who's our boy? We have a lot. Uh, Kevin Smith? Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. He's competing he's soon. He is at the collision. Number I one. Tried to lead you right into it. He sure did. Same circle of friends. All right, 11 11. 11 11. And so Moses and Haas tied up at the moment. Big, big round one for both of the rookies and an opportunity. Whoever wins that collision match, whoever wins that collision match will have three victories, whether it's Saul or whether it's either a Moose or Amaru. So this is crucial. Three match, three straight victories. In well, it's not just the three victories. It's it's going to be who they might face to get their fourth victory. Well, their fourth is the title shot. I know. That's what I was leading you in. See, we're trying to build up well, excitement. Yeah. Well, that's the title. Yeah, that's right. That's what happens. You get a number one contender match, you get a shot at a championship. That's kind of I'm why. I'm just it's spelling it out for the fans, oh. Christian. Well, they're spelling it out because they can read round number two. It's the wheel round. Moose Haas is going to have an opportunity. No, no, excuse me. Moses, because he was the higher ranked, he'll have an opportunity. I'm watching TV with my grandpa. It should be. It's exactly how it goes. But, uh, you know, it is It is fun to watch it this way. I have to be honest with you. It's can not I tell you this, though? With yeah. Haas and Moses, they both had some interesting backstories during this match. 
here comes this. The, dude, this cat, this cat was a was a thing going through the whole match because I did not know he had this cat. I don't remember the cat. We the stole cat the didn't drink. seem like it wanted to be there. Everybody was worried for the cat's well-being. It was it was a whole thing. Look at that. That is not a healthy relationship between <laughs> pet owner and pet. Like, because I don't know if it is a pet owner. I think he probably just stole it out of his neighbor's backyard. Yeah. I, I think it's a sock puppet right there. Absolutely. That cat wants out. He yeah. Wants, but, but look, as long as I've known him, I would, love, I, I, <laughs> I would love to see that cat. Just give him a right hook. Not not draw blood, but just like smack him right across the jaw. All right. Here's, yeah. Yeah, here is yeah. the categories. The categories are on the wheel. Yeah. And the spin. Spin That's, for so, Moose. Yeah. So uh, Moose is obviously deferred. And here is the spin. And it's going to land on... TMNT. Now, do you remember if he takes this or not? Um, I believe he does, and I also believe it stands for Teenage Mutant Ninja Tortoises. Tortoises. It should be. That's well, that should be the reboot. They've done the turtles too many times, and only. Can you imagine the fan backlash? <laughs> Kidding me? They changed it to tortoises. They should. To Everybody's fired. Just to do it. It's going to be just it. to have some fun. Yeah. So now, it's, so uh, so here's here's what you got to do. Turtles, they're all right. Cats, are you still out of your neighbor's backyard? That's the spin we got to get. Guarantee that cat did not wake up as the cat of Tom Dagnino. You're that wrong. Morning. Um, unless it lands on TMNT again, which is very. Oh, well no. right now. We've asked a lot of turtles questions. Middle Earth. Mm. What do you think? He's, I wonder. I, I don't. I mean, look. I'll tell you this. For my comfort level, I would have taken TMNT all day. I am not, I'm with you. I'm not a big, if I can get something in that wheel that I think that I remotely can get, I stick with it because with the amount, and by the, the amount of opponent's choice that have been coming up on the digital wheel, I stay away. I stay It's away. completely random. You're in your head with these conspiracy theories. It's not conspiracy theories. It's just because that slice is on the wheel more, more than any other slice. Other ones get put in there and whether it's the algorithm or whatever it is, it, that's, it's, it, 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 the, the digital wheel has no idea what name is on each way. I know. Middle Earth. Middle Earth. In the return of the king, what are the last words spoken by the witch king of Angmar? Okay. You, you, you and I should team up for these. Are you kidding me? Um, I think it's like, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go see you in hell. <laughs> four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up. What did he say? We don't know what he said. No, we're not going to know. We're not going to know what he said. We're just going to find out if he got it right or not. See, this is the. Uh, I could try to pull up the document, um, but uh, probably not. Looks like he missed. Yeah. Did he miss and go for? And it looks like a potential steal opportunity, right? Yeah. Now I might be able to get some of these with multiple choice, but right. um, well, Moses has an opportunity to steal because it looks like Moose missed. Yes, I think that that was a a moment in the match. Let me see if those are still in the document that I have right here in front of me. They both missed. They both missed. Uh, so Moose missed the opportunity. He went for it on two points. Moses attempted to steal it. Uh, also missed it. So we have to find out what that, whatever that answer was. Um, we'll find Dude, out. Our, our writers are so on it now. They already, it's already out of the document and, and in the graveyard. Middle Earth question two: Who provides the voice of the necromancer in, in an unexpected journey? I think that's Benedict Cumberbatch. Didn't he do both? He might have. Yeah, I don't know. We're gonna find out. He got it right. He got it right because he got two points there, right? Mm -hmm. So is this an is this a third point? All right, here's the third question. Oh, he got that right. So Middle Earth question three: Actor William Squire voices which character in 1978's The Lord of the Rings? Any one of these questions, if it's a voice and it's the 78 one, I would guess Gollum. I don't know William Squire. Sorry to his family. I would have guessed Gollum, right. and that's not even an option. Three, two. One multiple choice on the table. I'll say Gandalf. And let's see. Did he get it right? Can't tell if he got it right. See, this is the difficult part about this count part. So it I looks. He did. Look, look, we're here to entertain a nation. Yes. Okay. Oh, he asked for a repeat. He asked for yeah. a repeat. So what did he get? He. All right, I'm looking up William Squire. We're at right. least getting this one it, right. It's Frodo, so it, it's incorrect. So now I guess that Moses is going to get an opportunity to steal here. So Moose missed two questions so far. He um, is Gandalf. Yeah, the answer is Gandalf. Okay, so Amador has an opportunity to steal it here. Can he guess Gandalf? That is the question. So what do you call him? Gandalf. 
Christian George. You want to go New York style? Gandalf. Uh, he got it. He got it. You're the one from New York. You realize that. Watch your mouth. Moses got uh, an extra point. Steals it. 13 12. Possibly Huge one. steal. But yeah. that's why I, I do love the five questions in round two for Inner Geekdom because it does give you a chance to recover if you have a stumble. Question four Which Peter Jackson Middle Earth film received the lowest number of Oscar nominations, only receiving one for sound editing? Well, it's got to be one of the Hobbit movies. Which yeah, I'd probably go. Uh, one. I'd probably go Battle of the Five Armies. Yeah, me too. Five, four, three. See, what did he answer? Did See, but this is where, as a competitor, you know you got to hit these because it's oh, he, so close. Shoot, did Moose miss that one? Or is it was it a repeat? It looks like it was a repeat. So that was the second repeat. That he missed. Yeah. Yeah, that was the second repeat. Unless this is Moses. That, it looks like Moses is, is thinking about it. So maybe... So maybe well, he's going to be thinking about it anyway, Christian. Uh, no, but he looks like he's... No, no, it was. It's he not, answered. Did yeah. he get it? Wow. So Moses stole... Two huge. Hours. Moses stole Huge. Gigantic steal. Damn. See, I haven't seen this match, by the way, for those people. This is my first time watching it. So... Um, well, thanks for attending the prep meeting. No, I didn't want to. I wanted to react to it. I didn't know that he stole that many. Look at that. So that's that's a lot. So Haas needs to, Haas needs to come back somehow here, too. Um, Moses, 14, 13, and this is question five. It's the last question in this round. Moses has to hit this. Excuse me, excuse me, Moose needs to hit this. In the Fellowship of the Ring, who says he has fallen into shadow? The quest stands upon the edge of knife. Stay but a little, and it will fail to the ruin of all. Yeah, that is probably the toughest question to even guess around for me, but Haas got it right off the bat. Who knows? I think maybe Gandalf. I don't know. I don't know. That's that, like I said, you're not going to get this isn't a typical Schroeder match where you're going to know. Well, what, what was it? There's going to be a lot of that in this. Well, round. we're giving everybody a lot of stuff to ask Jeeves about after the show. That's absolutely true. Yeah. So we just wanted to make sure that we updated. We know that right now you want to keep it for the stats. You know, Moose, uh, he hit that one. And now what we're going to do is that Sam's going to come in. Sam's going to talk to Moses and he's going to be very excited about this. Um, yeah. Sam and I, pioneers of the green screen. Yeah, look at Sam's hair. What about it? I mean, it, it like it's like it grows up. See that? Um, how does your hair? Does your hair grow down into your eyeballs? Sometimes, but not like I'm talking about just straight up. He might have used product, Christian. Maybe. You know, since you started shaving your head every other Wednesday, you I really start, start to forget how hair works. Yeah, it's, look, I don't go to the barber anymore. I just if it gets too long, I just sh ship it off. What number are you? Uh, I was at a two the other day. Shop it probably should have been at a three. Because my 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 hair length at the moment is is. Is that why you're wearing the hat? Yeah, I just say. Come on, nah, take it off. Same give length. Us a show. Nah, give me get lost. Uh, here is the um. Here is the spin by Amaru Moses. Yeah, and here's how we're going to play this, is that once the questions emerge, I'm going to ask Christian, and the over-under is three total points for Christian. Oh, yeah, you're, giving, you're being too optimistic. Mixed bag? You can't. you got to spin away from mixed bag. Yeah. I would spin away from mixed bag. But Amaru, I, he's a big, he needs a big round here because to, you can put him away. You can put him away. I'm with trying to think of what my strategy would be with mixed bag, where maybe you think it's more surface level because it's mixed, but I just don't feel like that's the case with these kind of questions. IG, you never not 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 in a match where you're getting close to a number one contender match. You're gonna you're gonna these guys are gonna be tested, right? I mean, look at a moose got tested in that round, you know, and he, he fought it off, but he's only up by one point going into this round. Moses, especially put, if that's your first spin, you have nothing to lose because if you spin opponent's choice, there's a chance they're just gonna give you a mixed bag anyway. And oh, look at this opponent's choice, opponent's choice. So, um, there you go. So now the question is, what does he give him? What is he but this is where you start thinking that maybe it's going to even out because, yeah, Moose gave away a couple steal opportunities, but now mm -hmm. opponent's choice, what can Moose saddle Moses with? Right. Um, I, now, you know, same thing. Uh, you know, I was uh, I was figuring out that we could uh, give this guy, uh, give him uh, Meryl Street movies. No, Tom, that's not an inner geek in category. That's, that's Gucci right. looks like a tourist who's trying to act like a poker player. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, look, yeah, sure, sure. Do we got to do? Yeah, fold the hands. 
All right, I am saying something. That was from my other setup that day because I had to shoot uh, a couple TV things that morning. Very proud of you. Oh. And here it is. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, Moses and I have this. Uh, he's got a little bit. No, he's got a little less than I, hair on his head than I do right now. Okay. How much? I wonder if his grows up. Maybe my 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 uh, my daughter's hair grows up too. I, I think that's how. All not- goes okay, Christian. Fantasy oh. sci-fi. Yes, Which sir. actor plays Jason, the Red Ranger, in 2017 Power Rangers? Again, Christian needs three points here. Dacre Montgomery. What I was going to guess. How are we going to know? You're going to tell. Oh, you're going to tell me. You're going to look it up. Uh, am he, I? He said Dacre Montgomery. So is that right? <laughs> He's right. So I, I got two points. Are you sure he said Dacre Montgomery? Yeah. Suck on it, Ellis. So you, you talk about a kid with great hair. Dacre Montgomery's that kid. Yeah. Holy crap! Got, you did a showdown. Fantasy sci-fi. Go ahead. What 2000s film co-stars Jim Broadbent, James McAvoy, and Georgie Henley? That wanted? I don't. I'm not looking these up. This is. Look it up. It's a lot of you. You do you not have a computer? He gave a really long answer, so what he I, it wasn't it wasn't wanted. So so I was wrong because whatever his answer was clearly wasn't wanted. Oh no! You know what it was? I think it was Chronicles of Narnia. Okay, that's exactly what it was. It yeah. was one of those The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, I believe. Oh my God, give me this one. Okay, um, the ultimate penalty in the film Dread is death, but below that is various lengths of time spent where? You Watch- love this movie. Watching the original Dread with Rob Schneider. Christian. The first one's terrible, come on. Wow, is your best friend Sylvester Stallone going to blow up your Instagram? I am the law! Oh, okay, now I get a, I get a plus one. See, cryo can- sleep would no. be great for me I'm, I'm gonna say it's iso cubes okay well you can look that up i hold on b he said b yeah all right so i got three points so i tied you so i tied it do you have three po- yeah you do three okay po- all right so now, for the right. lead but moses has a four point lead over haas at the moment right but you if if you have the kind of second round that haas did give me give me as your opponent, you want to make sure you get in with over five points in round three. What 1980s fantasy film begins with a sacred object known as a talisman that's about to be destroyed? Uh, time. He's going to ask for multiple choice. All right, I get multiple choice. Conan the Destroyer. No, 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 no. Red Sonia. That's Sonya. Okay. How confident are you? Not. Any 80s movie, and I get that question with no multiple choice, I'm just saying enemy mine. Let's see. But I know it's not Flash Gordon. But it's he said Flash Gordon. Wrong. <laughs> Incorrect. All right. So he, he said Flash Gordon. That was wrong. So Moose has an opportunity to steal here. He needs this steal. It's 19. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a massive steal for Moose. So you're going to re-ask the question. It was a lengthy one. Yes. Did you? Do you have? The, we don't have the answers in front of us. And I got to give them the options too. Yeah. So you got Red Sonia Conan the Barbarian. You got it right, but I don't know what he said. Red Sonia. Uh, I I said that is Red Sonia's correct. Yeah. All right. So I got four points. Look at me. See. I can't wait. I, I just wish I could see the look on your parents' face when you tell them. I have, I have the same amount of points as Moses in this round. I think, don't I? Yeah. Uh, easy. 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 Yeah, I'm just saying. Maybe not. You might be able to. <laughs> you don't. Yes. Okay, Christian. In surrogates, who plays the leader of the humans against the use of surrogates known by the name Prophet? Oh, God. Um, the leader of the humans? Come on, go to multiple choice, Moses. Help me out here. I think it's... It's got to be Bruce Willis. He's going to... No, no, no. He's not the leader of the humans. Uh, Isn't he in a movie called Surrogates? Did we, or, or was that the surrogate? No, he, he, he. It's the same thing, but it's it's. Uh, but you ask him for the villain, uh, Michael Clark. I'm going to say Michael J. White. Oh, I don't know. No, I don't worry. Twenty to sixteen, he got it. He got it right. I don't know what it was, but whatever it was, he was right. Uh, I'm just happy that I didn't bomb the round. So either way, Moses is up by four. He started off really strong in that round. 
Um, had to go to multiple a couple times, let up a steal, but he still has a pretty healthy lead with four points going into the third round. So Yeah, and to give you the situation here, uh, Moose, Moose had a very uh, expensive bottle of, uh, of nice stuff behind him ready to celebrate and amaru was literally in a room at at a family function at the at their place and they were barbecuing outside and he was excited to go join the barbecue and so they're both sort of thinking about how they're going to celebrate right. after winning the match because they're both still in it at this point look four points is not a sure thing we have seen nope. a lot of leads nope. uh, go away especially this season mm -hmm. The five pointer has been the kiss of death for a lot of competitors. But look at look at this. Look at how calm you can see the yeah. intensity. Yeah. But these these fellas, they've been watching the game for so long now. Not yeah. necessarily competing in the movie trivia showdown because they're both rookies, but they know how to control their emotions. They know how to focus on the moment at hand, and that is what is so impressive about these two guys. Totally, they're both. I mean, they both showing that they deserve to be here and both at a high level right because this is this is the big test for both of these guys because they being able to hang in there be able to move and by getting three straight victories if whoever can do that by collision to get to a title shot that's not easy to do in the inner geek them singles at this point three straight victories does not guarantee you a single match but that's look at the evolution of what happened with singles you know inner geek them at one point the only people that were ever really contending for belts was J uh, excuse me, Jason Inman, Rachel Cushing, Mike Kalinowski, and Mara Kanopic. Like that was that was your that, that was it. Now there's it's so open now. There's so many new competitors, but still build, build, build. That's what these guys are doing, and they're proving today that they should be here. I uh, I got a little bit of sun since we uh, taped this match. Yeah, where'd you go? Backyard. Yeah, I mean, I got a nice, nice, nice pool for for my night and not swimming. Your okay. pool that you had at that one apartment complex was the best. Sherry O'Terry, remember? She used to be over there all the time. Uh, yeah, me and, me and Sherry had quite a good time at that pool. Yeah. Did you ever talk to her? All the time. She was cool. She was really yeah. cool. We dated for three months. That's I, I appreciate that. I'm glad I'm glad that that happened. I needed it to happen. So I'm very surprised you guys broke up. I thought you'd be together for the... For hey, the, hey, the you and me both. <laughs> yeah. And look at this guy. Where'd that cat go? See, I told you that cat took off, left, trust, done. Trust me. And no, the the, the, the cat's going to show up again, I believe. Oh, really? Much to, much to the cat chagrin. I was waiting for chagrin. I'm glad you used chagrin because I would have been upset if. Is you that one of my words? No, but it was just the setup uh, was calling for it. So okay. now, if you please could to look up these answers, because I'd like to hopefully have the answers. Right, right. I'll look up these answers because unfortunately Christian doesn't have a computer with I him. Don't. Oh yeah, except the one in front of me. Um, <laughs> man, we really got a good two-man show going here. I think so. Check out the big thing. It's on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Yeah, you can watch all three episodes before we quit. Four, four episodes. You've been you've been on. Oh yeah, you know what? We maybe even more than what is this? Point two. Uh, which MCU character said you made my men some of the most highly trained professionals in the world look like a bunch of minimum wage mall cops? It's got to be. Uh, Nick Fury, right? Uh, I believe that is. Uh, is it Nick Fury? Or is it Robert Redford? Oh, maybe. Uh, we'll find out if he's going to get it. Did he get it? it was 20, Oh, he had to because it was twenty. Haas got it. Yeah, Haas got it. So whatever yeah. it was, Haas got it. It's twenty. So now, three he, point yeah. question to take the lead. He needs this, otherwise he can get himself out of that TKO territory. And you know, Sam's looking for that. Who plays Gene? Great name. The producer of Murray Franklin's late night TV show in Joker. That's, uh, that's, um, what's his Get name? there. Uh, Mark Maron. Very good. Got it. All right. You got it. All right. So Moose gets that one. And now it's going to, it's going to bounce back to Moses. Moses has to have this two pointer. Now Moses hits the two pointer. Then it will bounce back to Moose. And then Moose will have to hit the five. And that is, again, the five pointers have been. Brilliantly written by the writing team this year. The writing team has been. I there. just, I love the fact that I think that Joker question is a worthy three point question for inner geekdom players. It's a two pointer for you and I for different reasons. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, I think it's the same. I was saying. Well, I mean, I knew. I, one of the very few ones that, that I would know in this entire yeah. division. So funny. I remember 
Marin coming around the comedy store like years before. I mean, he was there all the time, obviously, but but way before the his podcast was even a thing. He was just Mark. Yeah, yeah. He I had to fight my first time in the belly room Friday night, packed house. He was up third, I was up fourth. It was uh, it was a fight. Yeah, I'm sure. So here we go. This is the two pointer for Moses. Moses needs to hit this in order to bounce it back to Haas and force Haas to hit his five pointer. Here it is. All right, Mark. What event causes the great disturbance in the forest felt by Obi Wan Kenobi? An Alderaan blow. Could you be a little sensitive? Oh. To the families? Alderaan got wasted. Christian. Sorry. We're going to have to edit this. Okay. And five. What would be really funny is if you didn't have any sound. <laughs> Right, the whole time. What if, what if this whole thing we were doing the whole time? That, that, that this part of that. And then we mirror in another team to voice over that. Yep, yep. So we just keep it. doing it on a loop. So now Moose has to hit it. If mm -hmm. Moose hits it, uh, then it's going to bounce back to Moses. But if Moose misses it, then Moses is going to the collision as a number one contender match against Saul to try to cancel the Saul show. With sound. With sound, yeah. In studio. That match would be in studio. So here it is. There is the five-point question, and it is Planet of the Apes. Roddy, McTell, played two different characters in the theatrical Planet of the Apes franchise. Name them both. You got this one? I'll look this one up. I think it's going to be Zaius, right? No? Did he get it? He got it. Whatever it was, he got it. So 20. Wow. He hit it. That's a big. What a great pull. So Moses needs to hit both. Moses needs to hit his three. And it well, no, well, he really just needs to hit his five. But the three will be for some extra points. Did he hit it, though? Yeah, he hit it. 26, 22. Yeah, I thought there was a uh, challenge. I thought there was a challenge, but I'm not sure. Again, I'm just. We do a lot of matches, folks. All right. Well, this. It yeah. looks like we have progressed, though. Yeah, it looks like you're going to the next question. So 26-22, Haas is up and has an opportunity to go to the collision if Moses misses his five-pointer. You can hit the three all day long. Here it is, a three-point question mark. Mm -hmm. um, in Star Trek Nemesis, the only person I know in that movie is Tom Hardy. Hardy. Yeah, all right, so he got that quick. And he knew that, and he was almost like frustrated with that question. All right, so it's 26 25. Moses now. Five pointer. And then it, it can hit this, go to the collision. This is big. If he hits it, if he misses it, Moose Haas, who is just chowing down on some snacks over there, getting ready to move. Here is the big five point question Will it be Moses? Will it be Haas? Who is going? to the collision we're about to find out with this big five point question i'm excited for it just look at how good drew and i are at building suspense yeah i mean it's, of course it's like it's almost I mean, like you don't hear anything at all you don't hear you, a wouldn't, you wouldn't know by by moose's demeanor that anything's on the line but that's that's just part of the game five, indiana jones in the last crusade what is the name of the secret group that has been changed with project with protecting the, the grail do you know this no do you the Brotherhood of the Cruciform Sword. And yes, I knew it before I asked it. Looks like he got it. Looks like Moses wins. And your winner! Amaru Moses! Moses does it. He is going to the collision to face Saul. There is the victory by Moses. He is now 2-0. Hard-fought victory by the silent assassin Amaru Moses. It was such a incredibly well-played match, and what I loved about it is the twists and turns it took, because look, at, you and I have done a number of these matches. It doesn't matter what division it is. If yeah. you have two competitors whose knowledge base is perceived to be about even, and one of them gets a couple questions stolen in round two, you think this could be done so, but man, Moose hung in there well, nailing his five pointer and forcing Amaru to hit his. That is what it takes to get to the next level and inner geekdom. I think both these guys have the right stuff. Amaru getting the win today, and he is gonna have a, well, it's probably a round trip ticket, but it's more exciting to say a one-way ticket to the collision. You said it though, it's a matter of 
persistence and composure. And that's what both these guys did today. Yep. Because Moose was in trouble after that round. He let up like three points in round two. And then luckily enough for him, Moses hits opponent's choice. Moses fought very well in opponent's choice, though. Did, did pretty good, navigated around. And even after hitting opponent's choice, he still saw himself with a four-point lead going into round number three. But they both, boom, 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 both 10 points in that final round they both proved that they should be in the division but today Amaru Moses was the better player today as he goes on to be in a number one contender match against Saul that match is going to be insane because these are two of the hungriest competitors that we've seen in quite a while especially out of the rookie class well well, Saul's not a rookie but still yeah, and folks, like we said, we, we really do want to give uh, Mr. Moses and Mr. Haas their due because not only did they perform brilliantly in the actual match, their personalities were on display, they were having fun with each other, but there was also a lot of gamesmanship combined with the sportsmanship. They both were very complimentary of each other, but they both were locked in, focused, wanting to win, and you could feel that intensity throughout the three-round match. We hope that you all got a little bit of it through your screen as we watched it on our screen, as as we struggled to guess along with it. You just see how deep their knowledge is, how broad their knowledge is in the world of inner geekdom. An incredibly well-played match, and we're sorry we didn't have the audio, but you did get to see who won. Congratulations to Amaru Moses. We'll see you at Collision, bud. That's right. We'll see you at Collision. That was a um, that was a battle for sure, and 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 also that should be noted for both these competitors when they were informed of the fact that we lost the audio. Both took it like absolute sportsmen and uh, and champs, and and said, "Yeah, unfortunate, but we get it. We let them know we're going to be doing this particular thing. They get to see their stats. They get to see everything, and people get to see the game that they played because you still got an opportunity to see the points build and all of that, but." Nonetheless, the suspects pick up three big points here today. Amaru Moses is now going to a number one contender match at the collision. And listen to this card that we have for the collision thus far. And this is how it's going to open up in digital format. You're going to see the Star Wars Championship of the World. That is right. The champion. Andrew, the hunter, Dimolanta, puts the title on the line against number one contender, Laura, lights out Kelly. Her second attempt to try to get the Star Wars championship, looking to become the first woman competitor to win the Star Wars championship. She is going to have an opportunity to do that in the first match of the collision. Match two, you just saw him, Amaru Moses. In a number one contender match, he is 2-0. and oh. He will be facing red hot. Saul, two and one with two big knockouts going head to head in studio. That match will be. And number three, the singles number one contender match undefeated. Kevin Goodenough Smith goes up against the scorching hot Marisol McKee, Lady Justice at four and one. Marisol McKee is attempting to become the first female competitor to compete for the singles championship since Clark Wolf back in 2018. So there are some big matches there, but it shouldn't be taken away from the main event that night for the team's championship of the world. The two-time champions, the defending champions, Shazam, puts the belts on the line against the team they took it off of the first time, and that is the two-time champions, Corruption, Mike Kalinowski, Chance Ellison, who looked to become the uh, the first team, I believe, in history to win the belt three different times. So what an event for Collision. It all takes place at the end of July. So make sure you check out that event. If you want to get it, it's the schmodownlive.com or all patrons will get it. Patreon.com slash schmodown at the $10 and up level. You get that event. Mark, this was a lot of fun. I got to be honest. Checking the mic. One, two. Checking the mic. Okay. It works now, and we should have audio for the rest of the matches this season. It's war, folks, and sometimes war games happen, and the audio got unplugged. I blame Finn Stalker, at least his cat. Yeah, the cat did not show up again. So thank you guys to Mark Ellis, to our great team here over at Skybound, to Amaru Moses, Moose Haas, The Exchange, The Suspects, everybody who puts the show together. Thank you guys so very much, and we will see you next time.